The Aspen Mountain ski area in Colorado is a favorite place for paragliding, attracting flyers from around the world, eager for a chance to step off into space from the 11,000-foot launching site. On June 6th, 1994, around 10 a.m., Raoul Willie and his friend Chadwick Wang were heading up the mountain to make their first flight of the day. It looked like a great day. We could see that there was a lot of other paragliders, all my buddies, in the air. Paragliding is really one of the closest things to free flight that there is. The main thing you're trying to do is, is find thermals and go up higher than where you take off. We actually watch the birds a lot, kind of mimic what they do. Alex Palmas and his friend Terry Paulson were already at the top, preparing to launch. Terry and I were pretty new pilots. We hadn't had that many flights in. We just started searching for thermals. Sometimes thermals can be pretty strong. You can get into a thermal that's going up at 12, 1300 feet per minute. I was a little higher than Terry. I could see turbulence that was hitting other paragliders. I saw it hit Terry. It was almost like him hitting a wall. Look, it's Terry. He's out of control. It was apparent that he was going to hit the ground very hard. Miraculously, the glider caught on the gondola cable. And there's a kind of a split second of relief where you realize, wow, he's, he didn't hit the ground. Uh, then it's a realization that now the gondola is pulling him towards the next tower. I thought that he was going to get sucked up into those wheels and eaten up. You could see him just kind of bouncing a little bit and going a little bit lower. And those wheels start cutting through his glider, all his lines. A couple more of those wheels, it would have cut the rest of those strings and he would have dropped off about 150 feet to the ground. And he started going down and then went out of sight, still just hanging, hanging by his paraglider. Stop the gondola! Stop the gondola! Ski patroller Corey Bretman happened to be working nearby. Uh, Raul was yelling to stop it, and we didn't know why. But we radioed the top of the gondola. Paul, oh, stop the gondola. Repeat, shut down the gondola. He's just coming off a paraglider, has hit the cable, and he's hanging on the cable. So what's his location? He's probably six towers back. Corey stopped to pick up specialized rescue equipment, then headed to the scene. The Mars unit was designed to be used for a full gondola evacuation should something ever happen to the gondola. And we have to evacuate all the cars. Though all ski patrol members trained with the equipment, Corey had never used it before. My biggest fear was that we didn't know what he was hanging by. Hang on, Terry. We're just about to you. I was worried that if, if I rolled onto the car, that, you know, it could have been the last little thread. Okay, Corey, let her open. Wide open. Wide open. Are 
injured? I think I'm okay. I was relieved to find out that he wasn't injured because that would have complicated things. The most tense part was finding out what exactly he was hanging by, which wasn't much. It was about six or eight of his risers, which are about one or two millimeter uh, per long cord. Hang in there, Terry. Pay attention now. I'm going to lower this rope to you. I'll swing it over to you. And I want you to clip this black carabiner in your harness, OK? OK, we got you. You're on belay. And at that point, I rolled onto the car, and we started cutting nylon away. If you've got a knife, go ahead and cut yourself loose. Okay, Terry, real slowly to the ground now. Got him. Terry, we're gonna go all, put you all the way to the ground. I was feeling shaken. It was good to have the ground under my feet. Terry is an extremely lucky guy. If that gondola hadn't been there, I think he would have been either dead or hurt really bad. We've got, I don't know how many square acres of, on, on Aspen Mountain, but um, the odds of doing something like this are, must be up with winning the lottery or getting struck with lightning. All right. Good to have you down. Good job, you Corey. Okay? You okay? Yeah. All right. I'm okay. Within five days of the incident, Terry was paragliding again. That was a wonderful feeling because the air was very smooth and it was reassuring to know that there wasn't some evil force out there wanting to knock me out of the sky. It changed me in a way that I have more respect for the wind. I'm more cautious now when I look at the conditions to see uh, whether I'm going to fly or not. The old saying about there are no old bold pilots uh, serves quite well with this. So. <laughs> I feel grateful to Raul and Chadwick, Corey, of course. I mean, all these things came together on a particular day for a particular reason, it seems to me. I still love the sport because you can actually fly with the wind and um, be one with nature. There's nothing like it. Next. I just had a hunch and I decided to go in a little bit deeper into the park. My headlights picked up on something that was behind a tree. It was white, and I couldn't really distinguish what it was. 